Good morning, Metro. Good morning. We're getting ready to start our morning service. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this morning. We ask you at this time, Lord God, bless everyone that's on their way here, Lord God. Be with the ones, Lord God, that's watching on TV, Lord God. Just bless us today, Lord God, that we can do everything decent and early. Be with all the ones that are sick, Lord God, and be with the ones who lost loved ones, Lord God. Bless us today, Lord God, to have a good worship service, Lord God, and just praise your name. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. My name is Brother Willie Thompson, and I am going to be leading us in song this morning. I think where we are going to start, we're going to start in our supplement book. Um, he's given us another opportunity. He's given us one more time today to come together and sing and pray and to worship him, to fellowship. And so uh, in our supplement books on page 21, that's where we are going to begin. Let us begin. One more time, one more time, God's allowed us to come together one more time. One more time, one more time, and he's allowed us to come together one more time. One more time, one more time, God's allowed us to sing together one more time. One more time, one more time. He's allowed us to sing together one more time. One more time, one more time. And God's allowed us to pray together one more time. One more time, one more time. And he's allowed us to pray together one more time. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You allowed us to come together one more time. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You allowed us to come together one more time. And we say thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. You allowed us to come together one more time. And we say thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. You allowed us to come together one more time. next selection before we have scripture reading, which is going to be followed by prayer. It's going to be in our Red Book Selection 118. He is a shelter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is a shelter in the time of storm. Right. True words. True words. He is a shelter in a time of storm. It is in our Red Book Selection 118. Let us begin. The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, the shelter in a time of storm. Secure whatever real be tied, a shelter in a time of storm. My Jesus, He's a rock in a weary land, whoa, a weary land, this weary land. Jesus, He's a rock in a weary land, and He's my shelter in a time of my, my, my. Jesus, He's a rock in a weary land, whoa, a weary land. This weary land, Jesus, he's a rock in a weary land, and he's my shelter in a time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in a time of storm. No fears of alarm, no foes of pride, a shelter in a time of storm. My, 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 Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Whoa, a weary land, this weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's my shelter in a time of my, my, my. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Whoa, a weary 
land, this weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's my shelter in a time of storm. Oh, rock divine, oh, refuge dear, a shelter in a time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in a time of my, my, my. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, oh, a weary land, this weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's my shelter in a time of my, my, my. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, whoa, a weary land, this weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's my shelter in a time of storm. Good morning, Metro. Morning. Good morning, Indianapolis. Amen. Today our scripture reading is going to come from the book of St. John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. I'll be reading from the New King James. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Mm -hmm. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. All right. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, All right. and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, for they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then said Jesus to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. Let's go to the throne of grace together. Heavenly Father, we come before you as one people, thanking you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you, give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. We, we lift up your holy name this day, Father. And we just thank you, Lord, for this precious congregation which you have put together here in Indianapolis on the corner of Mola Road, oh God, in 56. Yes. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the pastor here, yes. the Honorable Oscar A. Middlebrook, and we thank you for the bishops and deacons, oh God, and yes. for all the support. Lord, we love you and we honor you, O oh God. But please forgive us for all our sins and shortcomings, O oh God. Make us worthy, O oh God, to offer a praise as a sacrifice to you, Lord. We desire to put a smile on your face, O oh God. We desire to do the thing which is pleasing in your sight, O oh God. And Lord, look on this city, O oh God, and on our ministry, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to help men and women, boys and girls, O oh God, to, to reach their full potential, O oh God, for for that which you created them to do, O oh God. Yes. Help us, O oh God, to reach each and every one you called us to reach, O oh God. Yes. Yes. Those who may have fallen or slipped away or yes. are slipping yes. away, yes. have mercy, O oh God. Give us wisdom how to yes. encourage them, O oh God, yes. that they may run this race with patience yes. and, yes. and finish the course, O oh God. 
Help us, O oh God, to hear and know your voice, O oh God, not to be deceived. There are many deceivers in this world, O oh God, but help us, dear Lord, to hear your voice, O oh God, and to submit to you, O oh God. For we love you, O oh God, and we need you, Lord. Have your way, O oh God. Have your way, dear Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Our last selection before uh, our minister, Brother Middlebrook, comes forward to do what our minister, Brother Middlebrook, does. Uh, talks about um, what you need to do, what I need to do, what we need to do collectively, uh, and that is hold on to God's unchanging hand. It is in our Red Books, selection 346, uh, after which... Brother Middlebrook will come forward uh, to do what he does. <coughs> Selection 346, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Let us begin. Time is filled with swift transition. Uh -huh. Not a birth and move shall stand. You better be the hope some things eternal. And oh, oh, oh. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. Come on to my God's unchanging. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. To my God's unchanging hand. When you do, you will be the hope some things eternal. Oh, 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 to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. Come on to my God's unchanging Everybody ought to hold to his hand To my God's unchanging hand When you do, you will be Your hopes on things eternal Oh, oh, oh to God's unchanging hand And trust in him who will not leave you uh -huh. And whatsoever years may well, now we by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him. And everybody ought to hold to his hand. Come on to my God's unchanging. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. To my God's unchanging hand. When you do, you will be your hopes on things eternal and hold oh, 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 to God's unchanging and when your journey is completed uh -huh, and if to God you have been true well now there and break the home in Glory, your in wrath, so shall you and everybody ought to hold to his hand. Come on to my God's unchanging, everybody ought to hold to his hand. To my God's unchanging hand, when you do, you will feel your hopes on things eternal. Changing hand and everybody ought to hold to his hand. Come on to my God's unchanging. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. To my God's unchanging hand. When you do, you will build your hopes on things eternal. And hold to God's unchanging hand. Man, let us all say amen again. Amen. We need to be holding on to God's unchanging hand. It's amazing how everything changes around us and in this world except God. He is the one that uh, never changes. He's the eternal, the alpha, and the omega. And I'm glad I know him, and I'm glad he knows me. We are grateful and thankful to be here on this day. 
as we praise God for what he has done and we give thanks unto him for what he has not done. He has not marked us for death as of this moment in time. He's given us a little time to stay here a little bit longer to get it together. And that's the mercies and the grace of God and we appreciate him for that. Amen, somebody. <clears throat> We're thankful and grateful to our brother, Brother Willie Thompson, for leading us in the songs and in the hymns and in the spiritual songs in which we've heard thus far. We appreciate him so much for his work, his will, and his labor here at the Metro Church of Christ. Then we are thankful and grateful to Brother Dr. Cass for the fine way in which he read into our hearing the scripture as he took his time and expounded on each verse in particular, and we're grateful for that. And then he took us to the throne room of heaven and talked to the great God of heaven who has blessed us in every way and petitioned God, not only for those of us that are here, but for every member of the body of Christ for our worldwide over and everything that the man of God is supposed to petition God for. We're grateful and thankful unto him. And we are thankful unto each and every one of you who are here for your participation, uh, just being here to worship God in spirit and in truth. Uh, we so wonderfully had read into our hearing uh, out of the book of St. John, a very familiar passage of scripture here that we uh, had uh, read into our hearing that we're looking at today. We want to look at that and see what we can gain from that uh, because God has a word for us. Amen. And I just want to talk to us. I'm not going to reiterate or read the text anymore. I'm just going to get into my lesson text. But I want you to know from the outset uh, that the subject today is that you must come through the door. Right. You, you, you must come through the door. We have this beautiful text here laid out in the book of St. John. And uh, one may wonder why would Jesus began to speak about coming through the door. Well, Jesus came to this world uh, that we might have life and that we might have life more abundantly. Those of us who put our faith and our trust in him, we we know that we have an abundant life, not only in the hereafter, but we have an abundant life now. Uh, yes, we may suffer and we may deal with issues and things of that sort, but we have an abundant life now because it's all wrapped up in Jesus. Jesus, if you will, uh, had to deal with some uh, 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 peculiar people, and I don't mean that in a positive sense. He had to deal with those critics, uh, those Pharisees and those scribes. And, and, and as we look at this particular passage of scripture that we want to deal with, I want to back up in reverse just a little bit so that we can move forward with this. I, I want us to look at the fact that when we look at the book of John chapter 8, we discover that we find in John chapter 8 verses 1 through uh, around verse 11 that these Pharisees had a problem with Jesus. Uh, 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 the Pharisees, if you will, they, they, they brought a woman to Jesus who was caught in the very act of adultery. And, and, they, and they were trying to, if you don't mind, they were trying to jam Jesus up. You know, yeah, they were trying to jam Jesus up on his teaching and, and, and what he taught. And, 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 so, and so Jesus had a word for him, for all of them to, to disappear. And so they, 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 he asked, let him that is without sin cast the, the first stone. And so they, 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 they cut out. And then we find in the book of John uh, chapter 8 and around verses number 39, they, they, they claim to be Abraham's children. I'm telling you, they, they, they had some major issues. They, uh, 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 these were the Pharisees. And, and then we get to John uh, chapter 9. We find the Pharisees again in John 9. There, there's a blind man, and they, 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 they call, if you will, uh, Jesus in John 9, 13 through 16. They, they called him a sinner. Because of what he had done. They, they called him the same Pharisees and the same scribes. Isn't it amazing how, how, how people will call you things and they don't even know you. They don't even know your character and, uh, and things of that nature. Because their, their teaching and their way of believing is something different than what you uh, ha, uh, know to be true and what is factual. And, and then after they call Jesus a sinner, we find in, 
in, in, in, in John 9 and 34 because Jesus heals this blind man. They, 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 and this blind man, uh, they as he say, they, they call him a sinner. He said, I don't know whether he's a sinner or not. All I know is that I was blind, but, but now I see. And so they did accuse this man of being one of Jesus' disciples. And so they cast him out of the synagogue. But what I love about it is that when, when, when people cast you out, that, 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 that Jesus is always there to receive you if, if you'll accept him as he is. And he asked this man, if you will, about, about, about did he believe, you know, did he believe? He asked him. When he heard, and in verse 35 of John uh, chapter 9, when Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had, had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? That was the question in John chapter 9 and 35. And, and he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. So we began to say, well, what is it that prompted chapter 10? Well, what prompted chapter 10 was that uh, this man, these Pharisees, these self-righteous people that were there were, were claiming that they, they were it. They were the stuff. But Jesus showed up on the scene to let them know that, that they weren't it. He, he, he was the one that their doctrine was wrong and that, that he was right and that they, they had to come through the door. So Jesus takes this one blind man and he follows Jesus. And then we get to chapter 10 and, and we find out that Jesus makes these bold statements. And he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entered by the door into the sheepfold, uh, 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 but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. You must come through the door. Amen, somebody. Jesus says in John 10, 1 through 10, the message that he presents here in John, it grew out of his confrontation with these Jewish leaders following the excommunication of this blind man. We found all these things out that took place there and we know for ourselves that Jesus at this time would do something that, that he is very, very good at doing and that is that he would stretch if you will, he would, he would take these here spiritually blind men and he would allow them to have their minds to be stretched to a point to where they would try, he would try to help them understand and see what it is that he's trying to show them. Every now and then you have to stretch people's mind. You have to stretch their faith. You have to stretch their understanding. You have to stretch their service. And so Jesus himself stretches them out to try and help them realize and see that he is a different kind of leader because as we all know and we all understand that sometimes you know people in their own mind as they did here they thought that they were anybody could be a shepherd a political leader or 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 anyone a spiritual politician or whoever you want to be they thought they could be a spiritual leader and so the children of Israel were privileged to be in the flock of the Lord according to Psalms 100 and verse number 3 according to the Bible lets us know in Isaiah 56 and 9 through 12 Jeremiah 23 1 through 4 Jesus is the master teacher and whenever you meet the master teacher he, he starts out here in this particular text with an illustration from John 10 1 through 6 Jesus lays the foundation of teaching for self righteous group he, he lets this self righteous group know and understand that, that you got it all wrong your, your teaching is wrong your, your mindset is all wrong your outlook is all wrong your attitude is all wrong your love is all wrong your care is all wrong he lets them know exactly where they are by teaching them what it is that the real shepherd looks like and what the real shepherd does because this man has been excommunicated I need you to know that he talks about this sheepfold the sheepfold was an enclosure made up of rocks and, 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 and with an opening uh, for the door it was made up if you will of rocks but there was an opening that was the door and the shepherd uh, or the porter would guard the particular flock or the flocks at night they would lay themselves across the opening here if you will if we had an opening here they would lay themselves across this particular opening right there it was unusual for some, it was not unusual for several flocks to be sheltered together in the same fold but I need you to know when the morning came uh, the shepherds would go and they would call their sheep unto themselves and, and, and gather their own flocks uh, even though they had many there they would gather their own flocks because they would call their own flocks by their name 
Amen. Each individual sheep uh, recognized his own master's voice. Uh, I came by to talk to us uh, for just a moment. Uh, is that the voice uh, is at the door? And do we recognize the voice of the good shepherd who calls out his sheep? Jesus points something out here in this particular lesson. Uh, the question is, how is it that the sheep uh, are able to recognize the voice of the shepherd? I, I need us to know something today. And the world needs to know something today. And when we look around and see that the world is gone off to the left instead of going down through the middle following Jesus maybe this will help us understand why there's so much chaos even in a political time where there's time for us to cast votes and, and different opinions and ideas and people are being corrupt and doing all kinds of crazy things to, to keep people from voting and for keeping people from doing all sorts of things I, I, I need us to know that how are they able to recognize his voice Because in order for one to hear the voice of the shepherd, ah, the shepherd had to spend time with his flock. That's how they were able to recognize the shepherd's voice because the shepherd had to spend time with his flock. Unlike the world, the world needs to spend time with the shepherd, but the world has chosen another shepherd other than the true shepherd, which is Jesus Christ. And they're hearing a whole lot of voices. I came by to tell you we have to hear God's voice above the noise. Children of God must hear the voice of God above all the noise that's going on in the world. And so when we look at it, we find out that, in other words, that the shepherd had to spend not just time, but, but quality time. Can, can I lay my foundation here? Uh, you must come by the door, but the shepherd had to spend quality time with his flock. In other words, uh, just like today, uh, uh, we have shepherds or, 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 or pastors or, and, and, and the flock. We, you got to spend some time with the sheep. There's no absentee shepherd. You got to spend time with the sheep in order for the sheep to know you and to recognize your voice. So back then, Jesus was the one that was letting them know that he had to spend time. They had to spend time with the shepherd in order for the sheep uh, to know the shepherd's voice. So he spent that quality time. and there, 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 there was an intimacy in that relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. And the sheep and the shepherd. And the shepherd had to spend that kind of time with the flock. He had to lead. He had to feed. He had to nurture. He had to guide. He had to direct. He had to protect. And he had to make sure that the, the flock was well taken care of. And Jesus points this out to these Pharisees and these scribes. In other words, it's through this close-knit relationship that the sheep became familiar with the shepherd's voice. And when he called them, they came unto him because they recognized that it was their shepherd. They, they didn't listen for another shepherd. They, they knew their shepherd's voice. There was a distinction between the voice of their shepherd and the voice of other shepherds. But when their shepherd showed up and called them out and said, Brother Derek, come forward. Derek, Derek would come. Peter, come. People would come. Vic, come forward. He would come. Why would he come? Because they knew the shepherd's voice. Jesus lays out for us that we must be able to hear and to distinguish the shepherd's voice Amen. over the voice of all these others that we are hearing today. Amen. We need to know that this close-knit relationship is not something that just happens for a day, but it is a continuation of a relationship. I don't know about you all, but I think about a little baby. I remember when my son was a little baby, and, and it didn't matter where he was at. Uh, when I stepped in the room and I said, hey, or anything, Tess, uh, he would stop whatever he was doing and start looking around, even though he couldn't see me, but he recognized the voice. That's because I spent time with my son. I, I spent time with the flock that was there, and so he understood and knew that that's daddy's voice. There's nobody's voice like that, even though he could be in a room with all the other people just talking. He understood that there was a distinctive voice that had stepped inside of the room. And, and I need us to understand that there is a distinctive voice that is in this holy writ, this book called the Bible, that speaks unto our spirit. And we have to learn and be able to distinguish the difference between the teachings of God and the teachings of man. Amen. And when we're able to do that, we're able to do what God has called us to do. And so these sheep, Jesus was pointing out as he gives this illustration, the moment they would hear the voice, they would respond. 
how could they respond because they knew the voice of the one who had loved them the voice of the one who had nurtured them the one of the voice of the one who had fed them the one voice of the one who had cared for them the voice of the one who had led them in the way in which they were supposed to go so jesus tell them that the true shepherd comes in through the door He lets them know, he says, that the, the true shepherd comes in through the door and the, the porter recognizes him. In other words, he's got a familiar face and he recognizes him. How many of us would recognize Jesus? He's not in visible form, but he's in spirit. How many of us are able to recognize that it's of God and it's not of man? It's of God, it's not of the devil. You got to spend some time with God in order to recognize and distinguish the difference because the devil can transform himself into an angel of light. He, he, he's a big guy, like he's a trickster. The Bible calls him a thief and a robber. And we have to be careful how we hear because some things we hear, they may have a little bit mixed with the word of God, but there's a great mix of nothing but man's ideology. Yeah, I don't have to say nothing. I'm teaching right now. I'll preach in a little while. He said, but the thieves and the robbers, if they would, they would have to sneak in. But watch this here. Even if they got in, they couldn't get the sheep. When, when, when the shepherd has done his job, when the shepherd has spent time with the sheep, when the shepherd has nurtured the sheep, when the, when the shepherd has laid the foundation for the sheep to understand and to know when a thief comes in, I came by to tell you that the sheep will not listen to a thief because they realize and know that it's not the voice of the shepherd that loves me. It's not the voice of a shepherd who's trying to take care of me. It's the voice of one who snuck in over the fence. They didn't come through the door, but I came by to tell you if you ever want to get to Jesus, you got to come through the door because Jesus is the way. He's the truth and the light. So these thieves couldn't get in. But these, as Jesus taught this, what happened was these Pharisees couldn't understand it. They couldn't understand it. They were so self-righteous in their own way that they could not understand what was actually going on and what Jesus was actually teaching. We live in a world today where people really don't understand that this world is not our home. I, I preached it some weeks ago. This world is a place where we're just passing through. We need to understand. We need someone to guide us and to direct our paths that can care for us and take care of us in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this political uh, uh, rupture here we need to understand and know that there is somebody who sees a way out there is somebody who can lead us out there is somebody who loves us there is somebody who cares for us and his name is Jesus and we need not anyone else to try to lead us anywhere it doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat or a Republican what matters is that if Jesus is my shepherd I shall not want because he makes me lay down in green pastures he knows what to do for me when I don't know what to do for myself. Uh, he leads me beside still waters uh, and I hear his voice telling me relax and calm down. Everything is going to be alright. It doesn't matter if the world erupts. Uh, it doesn't matter who gets in office. Uh, he already has an office established in heaven and we as his sheep need to understand that if heaven is our home we have nothing to worry about. Even if the world puts us out. We have a God whose son's name is Jesus is able to not only lead us out of the pasture but he brings us into the flock and I don't know about you but I'm thankful to God that I serve a God who will accept anybody if they would just believe on him to be the son of the living God the voice the sheep recognize is the only voice of their own shepherd. The only voice the sheep will recognize is the voice of their own shepherd. And Jesus taught this because uh, the man was excommunicated. You ever thought you were a part of something? Or know somebody that thought they were a part of something? And you got put out. 
because you disagreed. Disagreement sometimes can be healthy, wholesome, and good. It can be very educational. It can be, it can be a growth, a food growth to help you grow to a higher plane. And Jesus was stretching them to help them realize and see that I am the one that you are going to have to come through. Your self-righteousness will not save you, but I am the door. And as we look at it, Jesus made it clear that the fold is the nation of Israel, according to John, verse number uh, 10 and 16, John 10 and 16, and that the Gentiles are the other sheep uh, that were not of the fold of Israel that he would bring in later. And so when Jesus came to the nation of Israel, if you will, he came just as the scriptures had uh, prophesied about. He came as it was promised uh, that every true shepherd must be called uh, and sent by God according to the book of Romans chapter 10 14 through verses number 17. We need to know and we need to understand that if the man was to speak uh, God's word, the sheep would hear his voice and not be afraid to, to follow him. A true shepherd will love the sheep uh, and care for them uh, and since the people did not understand his symbolic language, Jesus followed this illustration up with an application of According to John chapter 7, 10, 7 through, uh, 7 through 10, uh, Jesus said, I am the door twice. Y'all stay with me. I'm going somewhere. He said, he is the door of the sheepfold. And, and, and he makes it possible for the sheep to leave the fold. Uh, and, and what he is, is that they come out of uh, Judaism religion. They come out of, out of that religion into the true religion, which is none other than Christianity believing that Jesus Christ is the son of God. For example, if you will, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, as we look at this here, we know that a door is of the same stuff, substance uh, with some part of the house. It is of the same substance of, of, of a part of the house. The door is. We, we, we know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. We see that. We know that. It's a sort of the building or, uh, to which its purpose or its intended useful part. But Jesus Christ is the spiritual door. I'm trying to help somebody that don't have a relationship with Jesus. For as much then as the children of God are partakers of the flesh and of the blood, he also said, and likewise, he took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil, according to the book of Hebrews 2 and verses number 14. A door is fitted. By the power and the wisdom of who is uh, concerned uh, to make it for its intended end. That's what the door is. A door is fitted by the power and the wisdom of him who is concerned to make it uh, for an intended end. So I came to let you know that Jesus is the one. I, I said Jesus is the one that is fitted by power. He is the one with wisdom. Uh, he is the one who laid the most worthy platform uh, and the controversy uh, and the purpose of all things uh, to, uh, to the most uh, wise and admirable ends. Uh, when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman uh, made under the law. Why did he send him? He sent him to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons uh, of God and daughters of God. Why? Because God knew that we needed away back home to heaven and Jesus is the door for any of us and all of us to get back to God. In other words, a door. All of us entered this building. We came through a door. We could not get in the building except we came or we come through the door. Nobody broke a window. If you'd have broke a window, the alarm would have went off. Uh, nobody tried to climb up on top of the roof and let themselves in. The alarm would have went off. Nobody tried to sneak uh, in any other way because the alarm would have went off. And what would the alarm do? The alarm would have signaled that someone had entered the building, did not have rights or did not have privilege inside of this building because they didn't come through the door. And even if they came through the door, they had to be able to know the note to, uh, the, uh, to turn off the alarm. We need to understand that we're privileged. If you're a child of God, you're privileged. To be able to come through the door, which is Jesus Christ, and to be a part of the church of Christ, the body of Christ that he purchased with his own blood. 
Too many people are trying to come to Jesus in any shape, form, or fashion, or any way that they conjure up in their own mind. But the Bible still lets us know that Jesus is the door. Yes, in the midst of, pande- of a pandemic, I came to tell you that if you want to be saved, Jesus is the door. It doesn't matter who you follow or what you think, Jesus is still the door. On the 3rd of November, it will be all over. And when that's all over and that's said and done of who's going to be in office, Jesus will still be the door for who's ever in the office. He'll still be in the door for who's ever at the center. He'll still be the door for who's ever in Congress. He'll still be the door for who's ever in our government, our local government. He'll still be the door for who's ever the mayor. He'll still be the door that if you want your soul saved rather than a seat or in a position and a place that this world has offered and you want a seat in heaven, you'll still have to come through the door. He's the only way. He's the only way. Men are dying. Women are dying yeah. from a disease that many are taking for granted. Amen. And many are dying without the security and the safety well, of having come through the door. Yeah. It's one thing to die because we all know we're going to do that. But it's another thing where the Bible lets us know according to Revelation 14, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Mm-hmm. It's not a matter of whether we're going to die. It's a matter of where where and who we die in. And so while we're here, we need a shepherd. We need a shepherd to lead us, to guide us, and to direct us. A door is set apart or assigned to a proper place and a service which other paths a house of a house are not fit for. See, the door has a specific purpose. I, I said a door has a specific purpose. I'm teaching y'all, just stay with me. The door has a specific purpose. We find out that, that in Second, uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 5, that, that the Bible says, for, for there is one God, one mediator between God and man. The man is Christ Jesus. He's the mediator. He's the mediator whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world. The Pharisees missed it. The world we live in, a lot of them have missed it. We're looking for security. We're looking for promises that can be broken. Promises that have been broken. We're looking for someone to lead us and to keep us safe. Someone to provide for us. I came by to tell you, if you're looking for that, you must come through the door. The only true and the real security and safety is that you must come through the door. What are you doing, Brother Middlebrook? I'm here to let you know that the shepherd's voice is trying to speak to your spirit. That if you open up and allow him to come in, he will take up residence with you. And he'll lead, guide, and direct you. He'll provide and protect you in the midst of everything that life has to throw at you. Amen. So what are you saying? I'm saying and there's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. Brother Preacher, why are you talking about that? Because in the midst of everything that's going on in our world, you know what men need the most? It's not a human leader. They need a divine savior. They need a savior who's going to save their souls. They need a savior who can give them peace. They need a savior who can give them comfort. They need a savior who knows what tomorrow is going to be. They need a savior who knows where they are. They need a savior who understands their pain. They need a savior who understands their worries. They need a savior who understands their woes. They need a savior that can walk with them through this thing called life. They need a savior that can help them through their trials. They need a savior who can help them through their tribulation. They need a savior who's able to do what we can't do for ourselves. And that is a savior that can take us from earth to glory. We need a savior that does not vote it on uh, every four years. We need a savior who's already passed from earth uh, and back up into glory. We need a savior that all we need to do is surrender ourselves to. And once we would surrender ourselves unto him, we no longer have to worry about what shall be on tomorrow because our savior has already taken care of our tomorrows. We don't have to worry about our past running up uh, and slapping us in the back of the head because our savior has already forgiven 
forgiven us for all of our past sins. Uh, we need a Savior who will take us here right now and lead us on unto glory. And whatever comes uh, or whatever may will uh, or be, we need a Savior who tells us, peace be still. Uh, we need a Savior who lets us know that uh, even though uh, heaven and earth may pass away, his word will stand forever. Uh, we need a Savior that no matter what happens on the 3rd of November, we're thankful for the date uh, when the Lord comes back to usher up his church in the glory uh, and we're in that number that no man can number. I'm waiting on the Lord uh, that one of these old days, it don't matter what we have to go through down here. I need to know uh, the voice of my shepherd and know that the shepherd uh, has claimed to me and let me know uh, that after you've come through the door, uh, you've already entered uh, into the fold. Uh, I am the good shepherd. Uh, the thief cometh but to kill, uh, to steal, uh, and destroy. But I came to tell you, Jesus put something uh, in his word and in his word said, but I have come. Uh, why have you come, Jesus? Uh, I've come that you might have life uh, more abundantly. Uh, uh, they may put you out. Uh, they may not treat you right. Uh, they may discriminate. Uh, they may leave you out there. They may not pass laws. They may not pass bills. But I have come uh, that you might have life uh, and that you might have it uh, more abundantly. Uh, in other words, Jesus, uh, talk to me and tell me. What do you tell me? He said, fret not thyself uh, against evildoers. Uh, in other words, relax uh, in the Lord. Uh, what are you saying, Jesus? Rejoice uh, in the Lord. Uh, and again, I say rejoice. Rejoice for what? Uh, my soul uh, is anchored in the Lord. Uh, I know uh, who my shepherd is. Uh, I came through the door and now I'm heaven bound. Uh, I know I got heaven uh, over on the uh, other side uh, and I will uh, make it. I said I will make it. Uh, how do you know you're going to make it? Uh, because Jesus uh, had made a way for me to get in by being my shepherd. That's how I know. I came to tell you, you must come by the door. You must come through the door. People are looking for a way to find comfort. But you'll never find comfort in this world. Not the kind of comfort that the Lord offers. He's the only one that can comfort you in terrible and turbulent times. This man, as I close, was put out because he believed on Jesus Christ. Because he said, I don't know whether he's a sinner or not. But what I do know is that I was. All of us have a testimony that are children of God. It says, one thing I do know is that I was. All of us was something that God wasn't pleased with. Oh, Lord, have mercy. All of us was somewhere where we didn't need to be. He said, but I know I was. Thank God for the past that the Lord has washed away. Thank God for my past that the Lord has erased. Thank God for my past that the Lord has given me a new future. Thank for God for my past that when I couldn't see Jesus Christ being the one that is the door showed up on the scenes and because he showed up on the scenes I was blind when he got here but after he showed me and taught me and I heard his voice no longer am I blind but I'm able to see uh, that Jesus Christ is the light uh, of the world uh, and if I walk in the light as he is in the light uh, I've got fellowship with him uh, I, I don't no longer have to be worried about being cast out uh, isn't that just like God? Uh, the world casts us out, uh, but Jesus takes us in. Uh, this man said, I don't know what y'all talking about, but I know my condition, and I know what it was, and I ain't ashamed to tell nobody. Uh, I wonder how many of us uh, remember what our condition was before we met Jesus, uh, but after we met Jesus, uh, our condition changed. Uh, and when you tell somebody that I know somebody that can change your condition, uh, you are blind, uh, but I know somebody uh, that will open up your eyes. Uh, you are lame, uh, but I know somebody 
who's able to make you walk. You were low, but he lifted you high. You were heady, but he made you come down and be humble. I know somebody, if you come through the door, you can hook up with the shepherd, the good shepherd, and have an abundant life. I just came to tell you that you must come through the door. I don't care whatever door you walk through in life, you will never come through the greatest door that is to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You cannot get to God without Jesus. Some people tried to reach God before. Over in the 11th chapter of the book of Genesis, they wanted to see God. They wanted to do it their own way. But God did something. He confounded the language. It took thousands of years for God's purpose and God's plan to come to fruition. And on the day of Pentecost, Peter and the 11, while they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Peter and the 11 stood up. And he preached the gospel. And all of them were from all languages. Heard them speak in their own language. In one place God confounds. In the other place God unites. I came by to tell you when you come through the door. The good shepherd is there to unite you with the rest of the fold. But there's only one door. And Jesus said I am the door. All others who came before me. And all others who come after me, if they do not obey and abide in this truth, are thieves and robbers. In the midst of a pandemic, church, we cannot afford to forget that there are still lost souls out there that need to be saved, that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We'll have other pandemics. We'll have other elections. But we don't know if we'll ever have another opportunity to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. We may not have, never have another opportunity to vote. But if we cast our lot with Jesus, you really won't have to worry about who's in office. Because the one who is in office is seated on the right hand of the Father. He wasn't voted in. He's always been there. And he will always be there. When even the life of the Supreme Court comes to an end with all of those seating in that position, you need to come through the door. You come believing the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. What's the good news? The good news is that Jesus died and he was buried. But the good news is that he rose up with all power in his hand. The good news is that you are able to come to Jesus by faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You must believe that with all of your heart. You heard Jesus talk to the blind man. Do you believe? He said, who is it? And he let him know who he was. He said, I do. You must believe that with all of your heart. And once you believe that, you need to repent of your sins. The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. When you hear that and you believe it, you'll change from your ways, which brings about repentance. Luke 13, 3 and 5, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall likewise perish. Once you change from your ways to the ways of God, then you must confess the sweetest name that could ever fall from mortal man's tongue. And that is that I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Amen. Didn't the man in John chapter 9 do it? He said it. He said it. Jesus said, he that confess me, him also will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven, Matthew 10, 32. Then you must be buried in the watery grave of baptism for the remission of sin. And the Lord adds you to his church, Acts 2 and 47. The Bible said, praising God and having faith with all the people, the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. He gives us a promise according to Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. If you're here, you ought to come. If you're here and you're watching, you want to get it right your soul right, that eternal part of you that will live forever, you ought to come. You ought to come because Jesus died for your sins and the sins of the world that he might allow you to live with him forever in heaven. 
and you ought to come because it cost heaven everything to give you the best of everything. You ought to come while the blood is running warm in your veins and you ought to come as humble as you possibly can. And if you've sinned and you've fallen short, you can ask God to forgive you. He'll forgive you of every sin you've committed. And his blood will clean you right on up. And if you need prayer, ask for prayer. Prayer changes things from earth to glory. What a blessing to be able to call on the mighty name of God and know that he hears you and knows not only does he hear you, but he answers the prayers of his children. Amen. What a blessing. You ought to come. We're going to give you an opportunity to come. We're going to give you an opportunity to come. You can come to the Lord. You can, if you're here, if you're not here and you want to be saved, call us. 317-347-879 or we'll come and baptize you that your soul may be right with God. We're going to sing a song of encouragement for you to come. Come. Come while we sing a song of encouragement. Somebody's, somebody's knocking. Somebody's knocking. At your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's, somebody's knocking. knocking Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man will open up, I will come in and sup with him and him with me. Jesus is telling you to come. He's telling you to come. Can you hear his voice? Are you listening to his voice? His voice according to the book of Matthew 11 and 28 through. He says, come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy my burden is light. He's begging you to come. He's standing at the door and saying, open up. Will you come? Will you come? Why don't you answer why don't you answer? Do you hear the shepherd's voice? Do you hear his voice? Can you hear him tugging at your spirit saying, come, come. God bless you. Thank you so much. May you have a blessed and a great day. Good morning, church. It is now time for offering. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8 read, For this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Let us pray. Father, we come humbly as we know how, Father, just giving you praise and thanks for all the things that you do for us, Father, on a daily basis, the blessings that you have given us, Father, from homes to jobs, just being able to do your will, Father. We just ask you right now that as we give this offering, Father, that you bless it for the betterment of your kingdom in any way you see fit, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Restore my spirit, Lord, I need Restore, don't you know that my heart is a weary Please help me, dear Lord I stand in need of more strength from your word Renew my love Rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. We have come to another portion of our service, which we've been commanded to commune with our Heavenly Father, Lord's Supper. It reads in 1 Corinthians 23, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 23 through 30. It reads, for I received of the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, you also took the cup, sup, saying, this cup is a new covenant of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. In 27, 
Therefore, whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer for this broken body and this shed blood that we may examine ourselves be in the right frame of mind with our Heavenly Father. Father in heaven, we just come before you, Father God, thanking you for your son Jesus, Father God. Thank you for the Savior of this world, Father God, for sending him, Father God. Thank you for his years on this earth, Father God. Thank you for choosing us. And Father God, thank you for his death, his burial, Father God. Most of all, we thank you for his resurrection, Father God. Thank you for all that you've done, Father God. Let us uh, take of this shed blood, Father God, pleasing and acceptable to you, Father God. Let us take of this broken body, Father God, pleasing and acceptable to you, Father God. We just ask this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Take of the broken body. Shed blood. anyone overlook? Not this conclude this portion of our service. Did we not have another fine sermon from our own brother Oscar A. Middlebrook once again? Amen. Amen. Let us be uh, getting our hearts and minds ready as we de depart from this place, but never from God's presence. So let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Gracious and loving Father, we approach your mighty throne of grace at this time. Once again, dear Heavenly Father, being so thankful for all that you've done, Father, how you watched over us and bless us, Father, to hear another word from your man servant, our own brother, Oscar A. Middlebrook, Father. We're so thankful, Father, that you continue to crown his head with wisdom and knowledge, dear Heavenly Father and just to continue to help each and every one of us, Father, who heard the message, dear Heavenly Father, to apply it in our daily lives, dear Heavenly Father, knowing, dear Heavenly Father, that as children of yours, Father, we need to better ourselves on a daily, Father. So we say thank you, Father. Continue to watch over and keep him from all hurt, harm, and dangers, Father. And dear Heavenly Father, watch over and keep each and every one of us, Father, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, Father, and return us back again, Father, to worship you once again in spirit and in truth, Father. This prayer we truly ask in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. And how the ransom singers will together lift that hymn. Oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. We're singing, oh, what joy when we get home. Yes, we're going to rest beneath that cloudless dawn. And in that land where saints never die, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. 